So let's see, what's the premise of the video? Right, whispers versus tyrants. Do you want to start it off or should, do you want me to go? All right, well, I, I mean, any questions you got, we should probably start with that, with that right there. Uh, so basically for, um, I think some of the questions that started coming up in terms of like, you know, comment sections that have been written so far is mostly about whispers and tyrants. So what's your overall thoughts on that? Like in terms of like, which one is stronger? So the stronger one is hands down tyrants and it's not, it's not close, but it depends on how much you're going to, not even money wise, but how much time you're going to invest first. Um, Pam is hard as F to get. Um, me and, and Evo and Cruz and, you know, other people on our server, we're, we're fighting to get Pam. Sometimes we organize survivor challenges to see who can place what so we can still get frags to help everyone. Um, so we organize that amongst ourselves, but just outside of that, um, Tyrants is hands down stronger. So, um, what, what level do you think uh, people should part? Let's say someone has like a maxed out Whispers 140 on all three formations. Would you consider that more better than like a weak version of Tyrants? Like, what level would you consider Tyrants better than like a full max level uh, Whispers? Well, so I generally go with uh, around like 116 to 120. Once Governor's around that uh, level and Negan's around that level, they're they're better than Lydia and Beta. Um, their skills, um, the amount of troops they carry, it's, it's just, in my personal opinion, once you put the gear on them and everything, they're just better. Um, with Pam though, since she doesn't carry more troops, she becomes more beneficial if whispers are 140, then I would say Pam around 120. Um, 116, 115 can be done, but because she doesn't care, have that extra troop capacity, she does take a hit there. But her skills are still better than Lydia's, in my personal opinion. Okay, so it, like just overall, you think that at a base level of level 115 and above, that can already beat out a max out whispers? Yes. Okay. If they both have on the same gear and everything, um, same level gear, same vehicle, um, even melee versus shooters, whispers may win four out of ten times, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I still would take tyrants over them. And in terms of like, because there's also um, like a call to arms, um, that version of the tyrants, I think they call it violent minds. What, what would you consider that as in terms of like, prioritizing would you prioritize that over tyrants or like what two seasons ago yes um because they made dwight so much harder to get now um well i don't want to say harder they made it more complicated for him to get especially for like free to play mm -hmm. um making it you know 70 frags a day but it's not really possible to get all 22 levels on that event every day unless you're going to swipe your credit card yeah. um I don't even get all 22 levels and um, I spend moderately. So two seasons ago, a season and a half ago, it, if you didn't max them out then, it's a lot harder now than it was. But um, same thing, because he has troop capacity uh, increase over, you know, whispers and everything, uh, even over Pam, he's a better option. Um, you don't have to run calves. They're perfect with melee. Um, they actually might be stronger with melee, in my opinion, playing with whales and stuff like that as well. A lot of them use melee instead of calves on that form. So, but, but why is that though? Because when, when you look at their skills, like I don't think there's any um, skills that benefits melee troops. But why? Why would you put melee on them? When you're, when most people are running shooters, mm -hmm. you try to find thing to counter them. Um, you know, there's limited good melee forms as is. Right now it's just whispers and then this new form that's gonna be even more expensive than Tyrants or anything. Um, the new form that came out with uh, Tyrese and Maggie and whoever else. Oh yeah. So, um, finding any avenue to go around and, and beat a shooter form, you try to find little ways and Dwight is actually really good with melee, so. 
and calves against melee, you're not really gonna do much. So what? Yeah, okay, I see. So it's basically for the like most of the purposes, just to counter shooters. Basically, that's the reason why you would want to use melee. Just yeah, summer. the whole aspect uh, is to find a way to counter whatever it, everyone else is doing. Okay. Um, I switched from melee to shooters uh, about four or five seasons ago now. Um, so I had to start from scratch because I had zero. All I had was tier 10 shooters and I had none of the tech done. Um, so starting from almost being done with melee to starting fresh on shooters, it takes time. So if you're, you know, most people when they when we first started playing, we had whispers and we had love triangle and hometown heroes most of us ran melee nobody was preparing to run calves and shooters until later on um of course there's like a handful that were like i'm gonna run shooters i'm gonna run calves you know those people are weird but uh 90 of us ran melee to begin with so finding a form to counter that's actually a good melee form is tough and uh Violet Minds is actually a decent melee form. Okay. So Even though the buffs for it are for calves. Yep, yeah, that's true. That's that was that that was leading to one of my other questions in terms of like, let's say someone who's running that formation and has only melee troops, how would you see them countering someone like a cav like a full cav troop? How would you see that being work being worked out, basically? It's gonna be tougher. Um, because you are losing that buff, what is it, 20% defense and 20% attack on uh, the the Violet Mines? 30% yeah. uh, defense and health, sorry. Um, so you lose that buff, but you can counter that with your tech, you can counter it with your dog, um, your war cart, you know, you, you just upgrade certain things. Your, your recruit plays like a major role. So like if you upgrade your recruit, um, Shout out to Esky. He's probably one of the best people in our our like uh, power bracket who, who leveled up his recruit. Um, so just like following certain people, certain aspects, like um, when I want to level something up, I talk to people in my power range, like uh, my friend Marie, or um, I might talk to Herbs or something, like message them and ask them what they would do, you know? So just asking questions and like saying like, hey, I'm losing to this form. How can I beat it? Uh, melee versus calves. It's tough if their tech is maxed out, but it's doable if you have a good war cart, a good dog, um, a good recruit, a good vehicle. You know, you you counter them in other ways. You beat them in certain aspects. Um, upgrading your decorations, um, getting the right decorations to give you the right buffs. Um, also depends on what server you're on if you're on a whale server countering anybody is going to be tough because you should only be focusing on attacking if you're on like a non whale server um, usually you're splitting your power between attack defense and health so focusing on what counters them the best and melee has a better attack than uh calves so focusing there may help but also boosting your health and everything in your defense might be a little bit more beneficial as well. Which one should someone prioritize like second second wise? Defense or health? Um, so I actually always tell people, um, depending on your level, the higher you get in power, you should begin evening everything out. But if you're lower and for OP fights and things like that, it's attack, health, and then defense. So your attack makes you hit harder, your health keeps you in the fight a little bit longer, and then your defense just, you know, gives you that extra kick to stay in the fight as well. Okay, well that makes sense. And I think one of the other questions that I wanted to ask is, um, when it comes to like free-to-play, let's say someone has a strong governor and a strong vegan, but their Dwight is super, super under leveled. What type of formation would you recommend them to use as a, as a free-to-play? So, if you're using melee, um, I would use the form that you're using right now, um, which is the Governor Alpha Negan, and I would use them in that order. Um, well, depending on which war cart you've maxed out, because telling people to spend rubies is tough, you know? Um, because you have uh, Negan in the rear, I would use the uh, Tyrant's war cart. 
okay. which is the flame spear. So I would that would be the one I would re recommend to give you that extra kick. Um, helps you with damage, helps you with you know stun enemies, things like that. Um, if you had you know uh, alpha in the rear, then I would use the whisperer's war card, um, just because it gives you that buff by having that survivor in the back. Yeah, I think that's one of the things. That, I think that was my first. Um my first approach when I had Alpha in the rear, I was using the Whispers so she can use the buff off of off of that war card. But I'm um, assuming let's let's just say hypothetically you have a war card like the one you recommended for Negan. Let's say it's not even leveled up yet or anything like that. This one, for instance, like you said, it's barely level 10. It doesn't even have like the like the next the next level up basically. Would you still recommend people use this or would would you recommend them use something that they've already invested in, like something like this, basically, level 17, close to 20? So, yes, yes, I would recommend switching directly to the other war card. Um, but the caveat to that is you have the Whispers war card um, at level 17 as well. So I could also say you could switch to Whispers and put uh, Alpha in the rear. But you want Negan in the rear because he holds more troops. Yep. Um, and just having that extra kick, if you if you go look at like uh, Flames of Fear, it gives you an extra buff um, on your damage and everything as well. So just just at, like at least having that, regardless of the level, um, having that extra damage, having the extra perks on there that he's going to give you, just is more beneficial in my personal opinion. Okay, so basically just the extra wound rate, essentially. You would prefer, you would prefer having an extra wound rate, wounding, wounding well, enemy troops. Yeah. The, the, the 70% to deal damage um, to one enemy crew, I think is more beneficial with Negan than the war card. Uh, you're using the, the, the horn. Oh wait, let me see. Which, which one were you? Let me see. I'm not sure. You said you're flames, using the, flames of fear, right? Yeah. So you're using that horn right now, which gives you the. Uh, oh yeah, this one. It's 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 a boost essentially for end rage yeah. and fortify. Yeah, for for eight percent. So if you're if you're using that and you pair it with some specializations out now, if you pair it with that as well, then you know maybe that would be a little bit better currently. Mm -hmm. But once you get higher, I would still recommend flames of fear. I would, and since they're in two different pools as well. Then you can start focusing directly on, you know, pulling from that war cart, uh, using the pliers on on that uh, war cart situation, the assemblage. Okay, I think that's pretty good advice. And then, so as long as, long as you're doing everything to upgrade, you know, your F1 first, uh, because we're not all whales. Whales can take their time and, you know, upgrade their F1 through F5, you know, in an instant. Definitely. But we have to take our time and focus on what's beneficial to us right now. And everything should go towards upgrading one form at a time. And once you maximize your F1, then you can switch to your F2. So I don't even, I don't put XP into any survivors until my F1 is done. Or my F1 has reached the point where I can't level it anymore. So my war cart, my F1 war cart only gets, it gets everything. And my other formations get nothing. I see. And in terms of like prior, prior, priority wise, what would you recommend? Would you recommend someone focus on, let's say, getting their survivors levels up to like max, or would you let let them focus on something else like library? Like, what would you prioritize it if you had to rank them? Um, survivors should be one A, I would say, and then one B should be your recruit. Um, your recruit makes a huge difference. Um, your your survivor perks and everything, yeah, like getting stars for them. Getting your survivor to six, seven, eight, nine, ten stars should be like the major priority. That's what gives you your passive buffs in your in your town and everything. Um, but your recruit should be like one B. Um, one C could be like a toss up between your vehicle and war cart. Um, dogs can be like 2A and then 2B can be your specialization cards. Um, 
outside of that, your survivor, your survivors are important, but maximizing the three main survivors you're using is what's most important. So your gear for those, um, I didn't put gold gear on my F2 until my F1 was maxed. Um, a lot of people want to put gold gear because it looks good, but then you're weaker in your F1 because that's materials you can use, you know? Yeah. So whatever you're taking, whatever you're doing to fix other forms, you're taking away from your your main form. Okay, so while you're busy um, trying to max out your F1, what what would you, where would you put like the equipment though for your F1? Like, would you prioritize that too, or like this for instance? Um, so, say. I'm one of the people that think you should actually keep it even all the way through. Um, so if one of them is 49, all of them should be 49. Um, once you reach to level 59 was the last cutoff. Um, I always said, take your sword up first. So leave everything at 59 and then take your sword up to 89 and then start taking everything up after that to give you your attack. Um, but again, it depends on your level. Um, whales, of course, they're going to take it up all the way. Dolphins are going to take it up all the way. Uh, mid-tier spenders should focus on your sword maximization first and then the other ones uh, catching up gradually um, free to play um, I think to be stronger in your bracket should keep them even but to be to do more damage if you're doing PvP then a hundred percent take your sword up first maximize your sword um, get that all the way up and then the belt for your attack as well and then do the chest and the headband together see okay i think i think that basically covers everything when it when it comes to this topic i don't think there's nothing else to discuss aside from everything which we basically just discussed almost everything that you need to do as a free -to -play, <laughs> so yeah uh free to play free to plays have it hard man like if you're not spending a dollar or anything it's it's really tough to even compete let alone in a in a non-well server if you're on a well server i feel bad you're probably you're pretty much just there to like chat um, but to do anything to maximize, like if you want to be free to play and you don't want to spend a dollar or spend or Euro or wherever you live, a yen, um, maximizing your F1 is like the major priority, doing everything you can, um, finding out when events are playing as much saw that you can, even though the rewards aren't amazing, everything should go towards maximizing your full potential per se. I mean, I, th I think that right wraps it up. I think everything you've stated so far has been good advice for a free-to-play. So hopefully yeah. they, they should learn a lot from this video. I hope so, man. Uh, do you have any closing statements that you you would like to give or or any shout outs? Or... Well, you're in, my ser you're in my server. You're in our server now. So like, <laughs> I hope you're ready to make some videos and shit. Excuse my language. Uh, but... Uh, Whoever we're facing is about to get zero, so uh, I hope you're ready. Yeah, yeah, I'll be ready. Yeah. Alright, well, uh, that's about it. Uh, once again, thank you for this collab. I think it's very, very beneficial for those that are, you know, seeking knowledge on these these areas. So, yeah, just thank yeah, you. Man. Thank you for clapping. Anytime, bro.